But uh, the common fund for commodities uh, has been around for quite some time. Uh, the organization opened its doors in 1989. Uh, the organization was created under the aegis of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. And since its creation, the Common Fund for Commodities is based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Uh, we do not have any regional offices, so all the operations are done from Amsterdam. Again, our Common Fund is an intergovernmental financial institution, uh, meaning that uh, the owners of the Common Fund for Commodities are the 101 member countries who are participating in this international organization. Uh, we also uh, consider ourselves to be lucky to count a number of other international organizations as our institutional members. Among those, the African Union, the European Union, Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, Conesa, South African Development Community, SADC, ECOWAS Economic Community for West African States, UMOA, uh, West African Economic and Monetary Union, CARICOM, East African Community, the Andean Community. Uh, the Common Fund for Commodities has uh, gained quite a lot of experience of its years of existence. So over 32 years of working on projects, uh, we have provided financing to over 440, now coming to 450 soon, uh, projects over the years. Uh, with the total financing uh, volume of uh, it, uh, of uh, over already over 800 million US dollars. So I've been a small player. We do what we can in our field of specialization, the commodity sector. And I'm trying to flip the slides. Yes. So uh, it's a highly specialized financing institution. Our goal is investment in commodity value chains. And the first question, uh, why uh, this focus? This focus is the result of years of deliberation in the international community regarding the uh, roots of poverty in uh, commodity dependent developing countries. It is believed that over 2 billion people uh, depend on commodities, 2 billion people in, uh, counting amongst uh, the poorest uh, people on this planet, uh, depend on primary commodities to sustain their livelihoods. So the CFC was created and the CFC aims to use its projects to transform the value chain uh, for various commodities uh, towards greater equity and towards greater sustainability. With the emergence of uh, impact investment as a major source of development financing, the CFC is fully engaged and is targeting impact investing in commodity sector innovation and development for the purpose of achieving the sustainable development goals, uh, which we will mention specifically with regards to the open call a bit later. Also, uh, do bear in mind that we give due priorities to the current challenge, challenges facing the developing countries, and that is the green recovery from the pandemic, uh, securing uh, nutrition security, uh, achieving a greater digitalization in the countries that otherwise suffer from digital divides, uh, taking due account of the gender lens in our operations, uh, we look for innovation, we look for creativity, we also uh, recognize the responsibility of the commodity sector to do what's possible to address the climate change. Uh, because the value chains for commodities are typically large, uh, long, and involve many players, the CFC does not hesitate and appreciates multi-stakeholder collaboration in the development of commodity value chains, which contribute to addressing poverty related to commodity dependence in all its dimensions. So these are the, the basic, uh, the basic uh, philosophical uh, foundations of the CFC. 
we look uh, in our projects for uh, additionality, partnership, and innovation to support our fundamental vision, strengthen and diversify commodity sector in developing countries, and to make it a major contributor to alleviating poverty in all its dimensions uh, and contribute to sustainable development. And uh, on this basis, we build our mission to invest in addressing and mitigating vulnerabilities of commodity producers uh, that may be the result of their dependence on commodities that brings them into poverty traps and which are uh, which becomes an impediment uh, to their sustainable development. Uh, this is as, as much as I was going to say about the foundations of the CFC. Uh, please feel free to explore the CFC website uh, where there's a lot more information on our operations, on our themes, on our priorities, etc. But in the meantime, I'm going to go straight uh, to the open call for proposals. Uh, as you have probably seen on the CFC website, excuse me. As you have probably seen on the CFC website, uh, to apply in the open call for proposals, you are invited to complete and send to the CFC secretariat a complete application form with the attachment explaining what the project is going to be about. So I start by explaining what happens to the form. So then you can understand what will be expected, uh, what will be expected uh, from the information contained in the form. This uh, schematically is the pro process of uh, considering the applications uh, received by the CFC. In the uh, most recent call for proposals, uh, the CFC received, uh, Nicholas, correct me if I'm wrong, but over 700 uh, proposals. Uh, right, so, uh, so 700 project proposals uh, received by the Secretariat of uh, 26 people. Uh, we do promise that even though this is challenging, every project proposal sent to us will be read by one of the project manager, reviewed and checked for consistency with the CFC minimum requirements. This is the first block, internal screening of project proposals by the CFC secretariat. Uh, as, as a matter of curiosity, it doesn't really uh, have uh, any consequences for completing the application form, but we organize this internal screening in two steps. Uh, first, each project proposal, as I said, uh, gets read by one of the project managers, and the project manager completes a quick screening checklist, quick review schedule, which is a one pager, one a single page, with a number of questions. Uh, to confirm that the project proposal is complete, that it meets the CFC requirements, that it meets the CFC priorities, and that it, it is that it, it's possible for the CFC to provide financial support for the proposal. For example, questions include, is the proposal coming from a member country of the CFC? The fund would not finance projects uh, that are based outside member countries of the CFC, and so on. Uh, those projects where the uh, quick review checklists have been uh, satisfactory, they will be reviewed internally in a group of project managers and the chief operations officer, who will then uh, combine a short list of projects to be submitted to the consultative committee of the CFC. The consultative committee is a group of nine independent experts appointed by member countries of the CFC on a two-year basis. So every two years, the consultative committee is updated with new members and uh, previous members leaving. Uh, nine uh, members of the consultative committee uh, meet twice a year. Uh, before COVID, that was uh, necessarily a face-to-face -face meeting. And I hope that this summer, the next meeting on the consultative committee is going to be face-to-face -face again. 
So nine people sit down in Amsterdam for most of the week, for four or five days, and they go in detail through the short list of projects, meeting the minimum requirements of the CFC, to review them and to make their recommendation to the executive board as to which projects are going to be financed. So this is what you have on the diagram. First is the internal screening by the CFC secretariat. That's where uh, between 70 and 90% of project proposals are uh, eliminated, are not uh, taken for further consideration, and subsequently reviewed by the consultative committee, who goes deep into analyzing the project proposals and who checks that the, that the projects are indeed going to work, that these are good projects that will contribute to the mission of the CFC. After the completion of the consultative committee, what we get is a recommendation to the executive board, whether executive board is recommended to consider financing the project or the executive board is not recommended to consider financing. After a positive recommendation by the consultative committee, uh, there is some space for feedback. Uh, the consultative committee hardly ever unconditionally recommends projects uh, to the executive board, but instead a recommendation is made on a condition that certain additional information needs to be provided, certain assurances need to be provided, and so on. So uh, uh, between the consultative committee and the executive board, there is certain scope, certain time when the project managers of the CFC will write back to the proponents, will reach out to the proponents to ask any questions and to uh, maybe supplement the project so it's complete for the presentation to the executive board. And once there's agreement, this is presented to the executive board with a recommendation for decision and the executive board decides whether the CFC is ready to commit financing to the project. So it's a very high level summary of the process, but uh, the, ba uh, the, the I think the, the basic idea is that there are three stages. It's entirely open, uh, internal screening by the CFC secretariat, the, min the minimum criteria, evaluation by the consultative committee, the technical consistency and suitability of the project to the CFC and the decision by the executive board to commit financing to a particular project in a particular country and so on. The secretariat will try to maintain as a close as possible contact with the proponents of uh, qualifying projects uh, to make sure that all the information is correctly reflected to the governing bodies of the CFC. And I will only say a few words about uh, the type of information, uh, mainly because it is very generic. And in principle, I already said it all. In the uh, impact investment in a commodity value chain uh, for a commodity that's important to the poor in commodity developing countries, and uh, that can deliver a sustained gain in terms of income generation, livelihood security, and general poverty alleviation for those people who depend on commodities. So this is the overarching criteria for uh, the projects that are eligible for CFC financing, that are suitable for CFC financing. Uh, do have a look, as I mentioned already, do have a look at the CFC website. Uh, check the CFC objectives uh, as they stand in the open call for proposals. Uh, the governing bodies of the CFC will be interested to see the uh, track record of the applicants, whether the technical and management skills can be demonstrated, whether there's background, whether there's history of the proponent to actually do things uh, effectively, to get things done on the ground so that the CFC money can actually work for the poor. It helps enormously if the application is well prepared, if the writing is clear, if it's not overloaded with unnecessary information, and if it contains all the right information that, it, that the CFC needs to, to, to understand, be able to understand uh, what uh, the funds are going to be used for. Uh, quality transparency of the underlying financial in, information, uh, 
This is explained in greater detail in, uh, in the uh, attachable Excel spreadsheets for financial projections. And importantly, any assumptions that are underlying uh, the project, that are underlying the project idea, uh, need to be explained and clearly stated. So where, uh, where does this whole thing, whole proposal come from? So uh, moving on, uh, moving on. Uh, the calendar. So how does the timeline look? Uh, we opened uh, the 21st open call for proposals already. It's published on the CFC website uh, up to 15 September. Whatever proposals we receive up to 15 September will enter the next project cycle. And from 16 September into mid-November, the internal screening in the secretariat will take place. In December, we will make a submission to the consultative committee of the CFC. And the consultative committee, a month later, that's a requirement, uh, in the end of January 2023, will decide which projects to recommend to the executive board. Uh, then uh, from February to April 23, uh, this is the window where the CFC secretariat will communicate with the project proponents to address any outstanding questions. And the decision of the executive board will be made in April 2023. This is the final decision, and we will notify all successful applicants about the outcome. Uh, we will try to respond to any questions uh, sent to the open call on the email. In fact, we make a special effort for it. But in general, we will not uh, ourselves contact the proponents of the projects which were not supported in the process of uh, consideration in the CFC, simply for the reason of concentrating our efforts on those projects which will be uh, taken forward by the CFC. But at the same time, we will uh, always respond to questions uh, sent to the open call uh, CFC email address. So a few more things to be said. Uh, what happens after the executive board approval uh, this is where the work starts because then we will expect to conclude the necessary mutual obligations with the proponents meet any outstanding conditions uh, carry out due diligence on the project and now that the covid restrictions are lifted somebody from the cfc project managers will come on site to uh, check that the things that are mentioned in the application form do actually exist and can be confirmed and can be verified. We expect that projects start no later than within 12 months after project approval. And we are required by the executive board to apply the sunset clause. Uh, that is, we can withdraw financing from any projects, our commitment to finance any projects, if the project fails to get started within two years after approval by the executive board. This is understandable because we need to use our resources for those projects which are making uh, progress. <clears throat> I will also start uh, saying a few words about the application form uh, before uh, passing the floor to uh, Nikolaus for the details. And I will only get through the general information. So uh, firstly, a few uh, disclaimers that the CFC does not charge any fees. If anybody is charging fees on behalf of the CFC, please be aware that this is not the CFC. We require complete and accurate information in the application form. If, uh, if uh, after approval or after positive consideration of the proposal, we find out that uh, something cannot be confirmed as stated in the application form, then it is probable that we will consider the CFC will consider withdraw withdrawing its financial commitments. As I mentioned, uh, we will only enter correspondence on uh, qualifying project proposals only, simply to, uh, to uh, focus our efforts on those projects which are likely to get started. Uh, there is a certain exclusion list for activities that the CFC will not finance. This can be found on the CFC website. Uh, finally, and that uh, comes uh, on a regular basis, 
if your proposal uh, contains some confidential information, please indicate this clearly. The CFC will have to disclose uh, the confidential information to its governing bodies for the purpose of making the decision. If uh, any information uh, requires uh, confidential treatments, please indicate this clearly on the application form. And finally, uh, all the applications are received on the email address mentioned at the bottom of the page, open call at commonfund.org. So uh, this concludes the general notes about the application process. And I would like to pass the floor to my colleague, uh, Nikolaus Kromer, to take us through the substance of the application form. Thank you. Ah, thank you very much, Andre. Um, this will be following the chapters. Uh, we start with chapter one, which uh, there we just want to have some background and in information on the organization who is actually presenting a case, who wants funding from the CFC. Uh, we want to know what type of organization you are, where you're registered and, and who the founders are and a little background of it. And then a snapshot of the location, where, um, where is the organization located, where is the project or the investment going to take place and the target markets and a brief high level summary of your financing activities. If we move on to the next slide, we'll get already to chapter number two, which covers the request for financing. Yeah? And before I get into individual loan or financing products that the CFC offers, a few general things which you can see here is that the CFC, as a matter of principle, does not exceed its financing contribution to any of those investments or products beyond 50%. Yeah? That means that financing from other sources must be shown in the financial pro projections and we must be able to trace these co-finance somewhere in the financial statements. And that can be other loans, it can be equity, it can be retained earnings. What it is, uh, uh, you can there be yeah, explorative, but we need to see it in the financial statements. The normal term, of the loans are between three to five years. It, it can be shorter, it can be longer, but just as a rule of thumb. And the interest rate determined by the CFC yeah, is based on the risk profile of the individual uh, loan uh, proposal. Now, the base rate there usually is the government lending rate, five-year US dollar bonds issued. If there is not there, we take some proxies. Um, and then we do, uh, uh, on top of it comes a little risk markup. Yeah. Um, it, we usually frequently end up between five and 10%, sometimes higher, sometimes lower, depending on, on uh, what you are proposing. And I also would like to say that if both parties are really interested to come to an agreement, we always agree. It, it never fails because of the, of the interest rate. Equity financing, that's the last issue here. We do only when, when equity is explicitly required for impact investing funds, but I'll, I'll come to this on the, on the next slide. So Andre, if we turn the slide, uh, here you see the concrete forms of financing that we offer at the moment, uh, right on top. This is uh, a classic product for, for CAPEX investments. Yeah, For example, if you want to improve or rehabilitate your palm oil mill, or you want to expand your cocoa plantation, that is probably something for you. That goes from three to five years. Sometimes for perennial crops, it goes longer, up to seven years. Sometimes we do have grace periods, uh, and uh, but we, what you can be assured of that it is always tailored to the investment that you want to do. The next one is uh, trade finance. That is one of our most, or it is our most popular product. Huh? It, goes from pure trade finance against shipment docks, yeah, uh, but can extend up to the point where a company actually requires funding to go out and purchase raw material, uh, collect, sort, process, uh, uh, ship, and then the supermarket somewhere in U Europe uh, uh, also takes another 60 days until the payment will come in. So that then turns out to be a bit more working capital like. Yeah? Now, the longer the cash conversion cycle, the more likely is that we ask for additional securities. But usually, this is being secured with a tripartite agreement. That means the off-taker, the ultimate off-taker of the product, needs to issue a purchase order and needs to agree with you and with us that the payment will come to us. 
a good example for companies that require trade finance, uh, our trade finance facilities are, are uh, is a company in, in Kenya that produces avocado oil and ships it to European supermarkets or a, um, uh, a company that produces mango mango puree in Mali and then uh, sells it, uh, is, has seasonal sales uh, to Europe. The next one you see in line, equity stakes. <clears throat> As per our mandate, we are allowed to do that, but so far we have not invested into equity in single companies, yeah, because it simply absor absorbs too much capacity. What we occasionally do is that we invest equity in uh, impact investing funds with an agriculture or commodity theme. So if there is an interesting proposition, we always listen. Yeah? But it is with relatively small ticket sizes between one and two million US dollars. Um, next on the list, development impact bonds. Now, what do we mean with this? Uh, this is of actually great strategic important to us if you happen, happen to be an NGO or an organization with a great project proposal for technical assistance in the agriculture value chain. And, and you also have a sponsor that uh, wants to pay, but however, only wants to pay uh, after the results have been delivered, then we would be interested in, in, in bearing uh, or, or in becoming a, a, a partner that pre-finances you and, and takes on your performance risk. Yeah? That is, uh, we believe that is, is the model to finance technical assistance for the future because sponsors do no longer have to pay out in advance against a claim that will then materialize or it will not materialize. Yeah, um, We have a link for further information, uh, which is, um, I, I think it's connected to the online application where, where you find an example. So in a nutshell, in this, we are interested uh, in, in proposals. The last one on the list is fast track financing that is proposals with the smaller ticket sizes uh, up to 300,000 uh, US dollars can be submitted under a fast track procedure that goes somewhat uh, faster. And sometimes even uh, funding does not have to be returned, but please note, and that is a bit of an expectation management that in recent years, the success rate of this has been minimal. It needs to be highly innovative. It needs to be of strategic importance for the CFC and, and have substantial additionality. So this is rather exceptional. So if we move to the next slide, you will see a screenshot of the proposal where on the left-hand side, you just need to tick, what do I want? You need to put in the amount, the use of funds in brief words, the tenor, what's the length of the loan that you anticipate, and then also indicate already what kind of collateral you would be willing to provide. If we turn to, to the next slide, you will see the same with equity. Yeah, it is uh, uh, on the left side, you see, do I want equity for investment funds or do I want to do uh, work with a development impact bond and then put the ownership uh, share and, and the use of funds. Next slide is that for fast track financing, nothing more to show there. Okay, if we move to the next slide, we move to the next chapter in the template and that is management and operations. Now, what do we want to know here? Under 3.1, Management and ownership. The key question is on ownership. Who are the shareholders? Are there any other ultimate beneficiary owners? Is the company part of a holding with sister companies? What is the context? That is there a board? Who sits on the board? Why? What are the competences? And to management, yeah, who are the key persons running the company? What do they bring to the table? Do they have complementary skills and experience? CVs in that context are usually very helpful if you can provide them. And we want to know, and that is um, three two here about the current business model app. Yeah? That is where many proponents have difficulties. Please expect that we do not know anything about your company. So start that it is company X that produces and processes product Y for export to countries X, Y, and Z countries. It's very simple. Yeah. And then where do you source from? What processing steps do you do? When have you been established? Where are you located? Yeah. Um, who are your target customers? Number of employees, sales, production volumes, capacity for production processing. Yeah? So really the basics and yeah? the goal is that the reader has, and that's us, has a good high level understanding what you do, how you do it, and what size level. And in many proposals, believe me, we have difficulties to interpret the business case, even the core, yeah, and with whom we are dealing. It does not need to be long, but it requires to be concise and with quantitative figures where possible. Now, if we move to the next slide, 
that would be chapter four. And that is market opportunity. Now that answers the question for us, what is around you and how do you fit in there? Yeah, We want to know in what market or in what industry you are and under 4.1. Um, is it competitive? Is it with a lot of pressure or are you differentiated sufficiently to, uh, to an extent that you fill a niche? Yeah. Do you compete on price? Do you compete on quality or not at all because you have such a unique selling proposition of your product that, that you don't compete at all? Do you have more than one product? Yeah. And what is your main revenue generator? And one of the key informations that we would like to know here also is, is how do you currently secure your supply? Is it from smallholders? Yeah. From spot market uh, or with, with longer term contracts? Yeah. Are you even integrated backwards with your own farms? That would be of great interest for us. Yeah. Because this is usually where the social impact then lies. And then who are your main off-takers and how do you market? How do you ship? Uh, what are your relationships to off-takers? Off is it long-term? Is it at arm's length? Yeah. What are the barriers to entry in the market that determines competition? And then who are your main competitors? Names and sizes of these competitors. And here we also want a little bit of macro level information, yeah? Are there any legal issues, environmental issues, political, technological uh, change ahead? Does the industry uh, expect any game changers, yeah? Is there a law uh, to be expected that, that uh, lifts the barriers to entry or, or prohibits exports? Is there a new technology coming? We want to know about that. Under 4.2, that is a chapter when we want you to express in a few sentences what makes you better than your competitors. Huh? Where do you see your strength, be it your staff, your efficiency, your unique product, price leadership, customer relations? Yeah, Please let us know. And under 4.3, it's the same for weaknesses. We will ask you in the proposal on where you see your weakest points and where do you see your need to do better and try to, to work on relationship Yeah, and, and, and uh, be honest, yeah? We would like to know uh, where is it that, that your company could do better. If we move to the next slide, that would be chapter five. We turn to the future. Now, based on what you have described uh, in the previous chapter on, on what your business is right now, uh, please then elaborate on, on, on what your plans are with CFC funding. How will your business look like after you have invested? Yeah, with CFC money, where will the effects be? What changes will take place? Will you be a vertically integrated business? Will you increase your capacity? Will you diversify your product range? Will you enter a new country or just simply produce better quality? That is what we would like to know. Under 5.2, how will your customer base change with CFC interventions? Yeah, Will you attract new customers? Will you enter new markets with new products or just deepen the market that you are in? Will there be any changes in distribution channels from informal to formal? Or will you will you uh, use, uh, or will you start exporting? Yeah? One important question in that context is what currency will you be selling in? That is very crucial for us. 5.3, supply. The supply side needs to be elaborated. What, what is it that you require to operate? Yeah, How will you secure an assumed higher supply requirements now? Will you diversify your sourcing? Will you engage with outgrowers? Will you import? Do you have access to substitutes? Yeah, is that associated with any increased risk? Will you structure your supply differently? Uh, how is pricing of the supply? And also, will you will will you source locally or will you go on the world market? Under five four, production process. We would like to know about any changes in your production or or processing process. One perspective is: Do, do you add value, yeah, through adding improve uh, or, or improving the processing thing by becoming traceable or organic certified? We would like to know. Another aspect is: What is exactly going to change? Yeah, will you need more skilled staff? Are you engaged in new processing technology where you need to be trained? Is there a risk of failure for that technology? Do you have access to electricity, yeah, or other sources of stable energy? Interesting. Five five innovation, yeah. Finally. Under that chapter, we would like to know if you plan to apply any innovation alongside the new investment that you want to do. Are you going to, for example, introduce a, a digital enterprise resource planning system? Will you start to, to uh, engage with blockchain certification? 
you want to become traceable, organic, yeah? start with carbon certificate, use renewable energy, or even less spectacular, if, if you are the first one that, that's going to start growing peanuts commercially in a country, yeah, uh, so you're starting a value chain, that's also news for us, we want to know. So in, in summary, before I, I move to the next chapter uh, on development impact or, or more or less a hand over to Andre for that, uh, be as concise as possible and try to underline your information with quantitative figures yeah, wherever they are available. Yields, production level, staff. Try to avoid fogging and, and, and do not fall for data and, and, and information dumping. Yeah? We are fully aware that no business in, in this world is, is perfect. And so please do not be afraid on self-highlighting your deficiencies and, and possible risks that your business uh, is exposed to. Yeah. At the proposal stage, we need to get a clear, high-level picture on your business to see if the business can be sustainable. That is the basis for any social um, uh, and, and development impact, which, which then becomes sustainable impact. Okay, I believe, uh, yeah, I now move over back to Andre for the next chapter. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Nikolaus, and uh, thank you also to all uh, uh, participants for listening to us so far. Uh, there's still a few points to be made. In the meantime, uh, we responded to a few questions in the chat box. Uh, the the uh, slides will be sent to all registered email addresses when, uh, when participants are registered to join the meeting, an email address was required. So we will send the presentation to all those email addresses. We will place the recording on the CAC website. Now I'm going to have a quick tour of the uh, section six uh, development impact of, uh, of uh, the proposed projects. And there are four sections to be completed there. Now they are listed in summary. So uh, section 6.1, so you need to explain what development impact is the project going to deliver? What's, your, what's the ideal scenario of development impact if the project is successful? what change it is going to make to the commodity value chain. And it goes on to elaborate on this in terms of the sustainable development goals, in terms of the poverty profile of the beneficiaries, and in terms of the risks that the project may be creating for our social and environmental issues. Uh, sustainable development goals are probably known to everybody by now. This is the list of 17 uh, goals broadly specified, agreed by the United Nations in 2015, and the CFC operates in the context of sustainable development goals. As you see on the screen, a number of sustainable development goals were selected by the CFC member countries as the core for the CFC operations. So we would appreciate if you could indicate in the proposal the impact of the project on those core SDGs as a matter of priority. Plus, if you believe there's uh, impact on other sustainable development goals, such as life on land or life underwater, etc., please also specify anything that you can say in the context of the role of the project in, in the SDG world, in means the metrics of the SDG. Uh, since we are targeting uh, primarily the development of the poorest strata of the population, uh, it is highly beneficial if uh, the proposal contains a clear poverty profile of the people who will benefit from the project. For example, that, uh, that uh, the uh, coffee growers in a certain part or cocoa growers in a certain part of the country suffer from lack of access to finance, from uh, lack of access to the markets. As the result, uh, cocoa production declines, and as the result, people are losing their livelihoods. Uh, and to stop the decline, to, to stop the increase in the poverty in this, in this particular region and this particular group of people, it is advisable to take certain steps A, B, C, and D to unleash the development potential of cocoa production if that applies. I'm just using it as example, obviously in every, 
every commodity originating from the developing countries uh, has its own uh, particular uh, features, has its own uh, special difficulties, and has associated groups of people who are particularly poor in the commodity value chain. So we would like to understand the impact of the proposed projects on those poor people in the commodity value chain. Uh, important uh, group of special interest are the youth and the women who may uh, suffer disproportionately if the commodity problems uh, keep building up. Uh, it is also understood that every project in principle may have environmental and social impacts and uh, the CFC would not finance projects that involve unmitigated negative environmental and or social impacts. Any evidence of a positive impact uh, that will be achieved by the project definitely needs to be included because this will help us prioritize the projects. Uh, please make sure to list all the environmental risks, all the steps that will be taken uh, to mitigate those risks. And we have a fairly formal framework in-house called the Social and Environmental Risk Management System that was developed uh, with the International Labour Organization, with the international community, which is, which is the, the, the best standard that exists in the international community to make sure that the CFC financing works for the projects that do not cause unmitigated environmental or social harm. And uh, we, uh, again, uh, we are mentioning that the Sustainable Development Goal number 13, uh, the uh, uh, car carbon, uh, carbon mitigation is included as a core SDG of the CFC. Uh, because the CFC positions itself as an impact investor, we have to be fairly rigorous in assessing those impact, those uh, the, the impact of the project. So the CFC relies on the selection of impact indicators. Uh, the commodity world is extremely wide. The number of possible indicators is huge. So to make the task easier and more uh, understandable, transparent and comparable to other organizations. The CFC is using impact reporting indicators and standards, the IRIS system that was developed by the Global Impact Investing Network. You are most welcome uh, to visit the IRIS website uh, indicated here on the screen to have a look at how this is organized. They, they have a lot of material on, on helping to understand how the IRIS indicators work. But there's lots of them. So with the application form, we include a sample spreadsheet where you can see uh, recommended IRIS indicators because otherwise it's quite easy to get lost. So uh, have a look and try to complete the most accurate available indicators that will describe and explain the case of the project so it can be supported by the CAC. So this concludes the impact section of the application form. And I would like to uh, give the microphone back to uh, Nikolaus for the financial section. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Andre. Um, alongside uh, your narrative business case, uh, uh, which I have uh, uh, guided you through, we would also like to assess the financial strength and the performance of your business. Yeah? And we do that in chapter seven of the proposal. So uh, in principle, we will ask you to fill out two Excel sheet templates, which can be found on our website um, together with the uh, template and which we will show after, after this slide. Um, one is of course the balance sheet and the other one is the profit and loss statement. Yeah? And we will require you to fill in the factual past financial figures of the last three years and a forecast for the next couple of years. Um, now, we, we have to look at these figures in a structured manner and grasp the general notion of them quickly. And that is why they are pre-structured. And that is why we kindly ask you not to amend the template, rather, rather try to make your figures fit into that structure. And when you do that, 
try to ensure that we get a true and fair view on your financials. It will save us a lot of time and work if we do not have to find out at a later stage that some figures do not match with audited financial statements of, or our findings, which will be analyzed uh, anyhow at a later stage. Again, we know that there is hardly any business yeah, uh, that comes with a shiny, super solid balance sheet, uh, uh, regular high net profits and, and tons of free cash. Uh, in, in the proposal, you have to the chance to comment on the tables and, and provide insights and, and explanations on the trends that can be observed or any up or downward figure that you uh, deem necessary that, that needs to be explained with, with an extraordinary event or something like that. For the projections under 7.2, please provide us with main assumptions. If you project hockey stick type growth, we need to know on what basis you do that. Please inform on the assumed prices, uh, on the volumes and on various products sold, the main revenue drivers that, that you base your financial projections on. Under 7.3, uh, we would like to know your existing financing uh, providers and, and what type of funding you have received and the amount. Um, and we would also like to know what the additionality of uh, CFC financing is, be it that you do not find or don't have access to local finance, that interest rates are prohibit prohibitively high, or that the loan product is simply not available. And finally, uh, 7.4 in that chapter, we would ask you to list the main risks that you are facing and that you might face when you grow with uh, CFC funding. Again, kindly be open and transparent. We know that there is no business in this world without any risks, and we know that anything related to agriculture is very risky. So whatever you write there, we can we can take it, and we have seen it before. If we turn to the next slide, you will see a template that we will ask you to fill in on the profit and loss account. I think there are no surprises on the left side. The line items uh, are, are standard and you'll see that it moves from historical figures to current financial year, the forecast for the year end and for the future. If you turn to the next slide, you will see the same thing for the balance sheet. Yeah. Also the line items are pretty standard and, and we ask you to, to move from the last three, uh, the historic three years, actual year, and then the next years. We then already come to chapter eight. Next slide. And there you see um, a list of documents that uh, uh, I either required or recommended to be accompanied uh, uh, by the proposal. On the left side, you see the list of documents that are mandatory to be uh, submitted. And the audited financial statements of the last three years, financial projections, which we've just gone through, impact indicators, also an Excel sheet available company registration documents so we need to we are sure that you are registered and then the legal ownership chart uh, um, for all entities if you are part of a group or several entities uh, uh, please provide a group chart so we know in what environment you are operating on the right hand side a list of documents which is not mandatory but it's highly appreciated if you submit them yeah foremost is a business plan if you have one by all means please provide it cvs yeah if available, environmental and social impact assessment. If you have uh, received loan from another entity before, you might have that also. Okay, I think that concludes my bit. I hand over to Andre. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Nikolaus. Uh, I was busy uh, trying to respond to a few questions in the chat box. I hope uh, this is clear. So I was just about finishing the uh, response uh, regarding eligible commodities. Uh, so uh, we're quite open about uh, the commodities. We have a notable exception for things like oil and gas and coal. So energy commodities are not eligible from the creation of the CFC. And also there is a negative list of things like alcohol, for example, where the CFC would not uh, invest uh, commodities and activities. So do uh, check the negative list on the CFC websites if you have any uh, doubts. But most agricultural, most uh, general commodities produced by the smallholders are eligible. 
Uh, now uh, you have uh, the section nine key details that should not be a problem to complete. We simply need to know who we're dealing with. Uh, there was a question in the chat box, uh, is a private company eligible to receive financing? Yes, it is eligible. This is the main intention that any organization can apply. We do require an organization to have a legal personality, a legal form, because we need somebody to sign, for example, agreements to finance the project. So an, an organization, an informal group that does not have a legal form will not be able to receive financing from the CFC. Uh, finally, uh, the last section of uh, the uh, application form refers to certain things that you need to uh, state positively that uh, the, uh, that you or the proponent uh, represents the organization in due right, that the country is a member country of the CFC, that the principles of global compact, uh, including anti-corruption and respect for human rights, labor and environment will be respected also in the project, uh, that the applicant is not a defendant in the court of law on any of the issues, that the information provided is accurate and complete. And uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we will use the information for the purpose of the CFC governing bodies, deciding on the suitability of the proposal to receive CFC financing. If any of the information contained in the proposal is uh, confidential, please indicate this clearly. So uh, this concludes uh, the walk through the application form. We have about five minutes and we have a few questions in the chat box. So with the permission of the participants, I will uh, quickly go to those. So one question where we uh, will be happy to answer that uh, digital companies in the agribusiness sector can submit their proposals to the CFC, provided that it can be demonstrated that the digital innovation proposed by the company will make a difference in the general context of the CFC mission. That is contribute to poverty alleviation by developing the commodity value chain. Uh, can the project be across multiple countries? Yes, we had this experience in the past. We do recognize uh, the difficulties of running an operation that crosses the uh, national borders, but this, uh, this is, is certainly suitable. This is certainly possible. Now, I would like to ask Nikolaus uh, to respond to the question. Uh, it sounds like all financing needs to be collateralized. What ratio are we working with on the assets to debt cover for the collateral? Okay, thank you very much. Now, now the part one is not, not entirely correct. Uh, our, our most uh, uh, yeah, sought after product that is trade finance usually works without any collateral. Uh, we work against purchase order. Um, and we work with a tripartite agreement. Now, the, the longer the cash conversion cycle of this trade finance facility lasts and the more it, it becomes working capital uh, type, we, we do see, seek some kind of, of collateral. Now, uh, the second part of, of the question is, uh, I think I've mentioned this, all our loans are are individually tailored. So we don't work with these with these kind of, of, of ratios and, and say, okay, uh, uh, here, uh, thank you very much. We are not going to sign a loan contract with you because you have, you have failed to meet that ratio. We look at the case individually and we discuss. Thank you, Nikolaus. Uh, so there's a few more questions uh, coming in. So e-commerce, uh, it's the same same thing with uh, digital innovation. So if it contributes to the mission of the CFC, uh, we would like to see those proposals. Uh, when there's a partnership of public and private sector partners, uh, how this can be better done from the CFC standpoint, from the CFC standpoint, and here I'm probably running ahead of myself, Nicolas, correct me if I'm wrong, but from the CFC standpoint, there needs to be a clear leader in the projects a clear leader who knows from A to Z what they are going to do and how this project is going to work. The particular form, it, it differs. We have 101 member countries in every country, the particular setup will be different. Uh, Niklas? Yeah, uh, maybe I can, I can even, even be more concrete. 
we, we need to have an entity that is liable and as it takes on responsibility on, on using the funds uh, in, in, in the matter that has been agreed and also in, in, in servicing the loan. When we have that, yeah, and that is usually one entity, then I see no problem. Okay, so there is also a question uh, if the company existed as sole, sole proprietorship for the last four years and now got incorporated since one year, can we count the three years before as, as, uh, as qualifying experience? And Nikolaus, I think this is back to you. Yeah, there we, we would need to take an individual look. Yeah, wherever we can, we 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 do that. But uh, we we do need some kind of financial statements that that have been uh, attested somewhere, and and we need to look at the business case. Yeah, but th this is not a a, a showstopper per se. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, there is a question about uh, public and private sector partnership, which can application and explain how this can be best done by the parties from the CAC standpoint. Same thing that there needs to be a single leader behind the project. And in the relevant section of the project, it needs to be explained how the public private collaboration will take place in the context of the project. It does not really matter for us if the uh, person signing the application form represents a public entity or a private entity. As Nicholas was indicating, we do look at the feasibility of actually lending the money to the entity leading the project, whether they can take the money, whether they can use it, and whether they will be able to repay it. And there, there is a huge variety of issues underlying this. Uh, there is a question about the uh, CFC grants. And the members of the CFC are largely discontinued approving grants. There can be exceptions, but uh, I think the basic answer is if you don't know, then it's, pro it's not feasible. Uh, those exceptions are mainly the CFC working with the international organizations who know the CFC since long ago and who are uh, help the CFC to shape the strategic priorities for working as part of the international community. So if in this, uh, if, if in this workshop there's a question about grants, then uh, in all likelihood, no, this will not be possible. Uh, if loans is their fixed interest, uh, Nikolaus, I think, yeah. I I need to interpret the question. Uh, usually, how do we find the interest rate for an individual loan? Is is that I, I mentioned before? We look at the the uh, in that particular country. We look at the government government bond rate, a U.S. dollar rate, and then put a risk markup on it, uh, and then we agree on an interest rate. Now that used to be fixed, yeah, uh, but in in a highly dynamic environment that we are now, we are actually considering in order to do uh, or or to to add some kind of dynamic component uh, to that interest rate. But that is something uh, for the future, yeah, because interest rates in general mm -hmm. are rising. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there is a repeat uh, second question about startups, Nicolas. So uh, in in general, we require the experience. But okay, Nicolas. So when, when, when we look at startups, we look we as as I think Andre that you have mentioned, we look at every case. Yeah, but it 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 is true that that we focus on companies who are beyond the startup phase, which have pr a proven business uh, case and are in growth. That for us is risky risky enough. I must say, for startups, there might be other uh, organizations, entities that might be better suited for that. Uh, thank you. So uh, we have a few more questions. So ask the possible de traduire tous ces interventions en français. Si oui, comment faire? Je regrette de vous informer que maintenant, non. Nos pays membres ne veulent plus définir la traduction en français. Mais si, si, Il y a des financements pour uh, faire la traduction uh, dans le CFC. Uh, bon, on va le faire, mais maintenant, la, la, la réponse est non. Uh, le secrétaire de CFC travaille en anglais. Donc, uh, en principe, uh, on, uh, on, 
on attend de toutes les propositions euh, être faites en anglais. Merci de votre uh, compréhension. Thank you for the understanding and so apologies that we will not be able to provide a full translation of uh, documents into French. Uh, we do publish the call for proposals in the official languages, but the Secretariat will have to continue to work in English only because that's the wish of our member countries. Uh, there's an interesting question uh, whether we support Islamic uh, banking tools. At the moment, we do not have an Islamic banking interest, but this is certainly on the to-do list. So we will see how we can develop something of the kind. Uh, further questions, uh, recycling of waste oils, and there's a project for the production of oil from used tires. Uh, I would prefer, and I think uh, Nicholas would agree that we should not discuss specific project proposals in this webinar, but please do write to us to the address indicated, the open call. Oh, I'm trying to see if I can uh, get this on the screen. It's, it's on one of the slides, but I don't remember which one. My apologies. I think we will need to get this sorted. Yes. So on this slide, at the bottom of the page, you see the open call address. Please ask your uh, specific questions to the open call address. Uh, the say, uh, questions about grants uh, has already been uh, uh, discussed. Uh, Associated subsidiary that are set up to do business on a commercial level in their value chain. Uh, uh, the question about the subsidy. Uh, Commodity association subsidiary entities is not clear because in principle, any company or organization that has a legal personality will be able to apply uh, through the open call. So it needs to be able to receive the money from the CFC and to be responsible for the use of the money. Uh, the recording will be published on the CFC website. So my colleagues are confirming. Uh, I believe we are, in fact, we are six minutes over time. So any uh, remarks, Nikolaus, if you want to share anything else and any last minute burning questions. Again, we will uh, circulate the slides to all email addresses that are known to us. And we will publish the recording of the meeting on the CFC website. Uh, Nikolaus. Ah, just uh, m maybe as a conclusion, I would like to echo what you have said. Uh, if there is a specific project where, whether you are and, and you are unsure whether to submit a proposal or not, kindly get in touch with us. You you will get an answer, uh, and 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 we will answer and 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 assess uh, all your queries. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you very much, Nikolaus. Uh, also, dear participants, thank you very much for joining us in this webinar. Uh, do have a look into the chat box uh, because the, there you see a link to our Facebook and LinkedIn pages and also the email address where you can contact us uh, for any uh, follow-up questions. Uh, after this uh, session, uh, you will receive a questionnaire asking you for uh, your feedback on this, uh, on this webinar. And we very much thank you in advance uh, for sharing your views with us. Have a good day and thank you for joining. The webinar is concluded.